What is up, YouTube? This is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. If you guys aren't one of my subscribers already, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and give me a big thumbs up. Today I'm going to be showing you the Marantz 6014, which I just took out of the box. So just this will just be a quick overview and I guess general unboxing video. Um, so. This is a nine channel, 9.2 channel receiver. You can use this for many different purposes. Um, you can use this as a Atmos receiver, DTS receiver, um, a Dolby Digital receiver. You can see uh, all of the different configurations that it does offer, as well as IMAX enhancement, which was new this year. Um, it also has all of the smart capabilities for Alexa and all your your voice commands uh, so you just download that into the skills uh, which is pretty cool it has pandora you got title spotify just tons of stuff including denon heos which is awesome for multi-room streaming capabilities gives you the ability to um, independently group rooms together you like with this receiver you can even break it up instead of just using it as one room like i'm using it here as a 7.2.2 atmos system you can use this as like a 5.1 in your living room with maybe uh your patio powering up zone two and then maybe your dining room for zone three so there's a bunch of different ways you can configure this receiver which is great um inside of the box you're going to find the power cord got a little wire guide we have the remote. This is the remote, standard on all the Marantz units. You'll need that during setup. Comes with batteries included. We got the Odyssey setup mic. Now, one of the biggest differences between like the Denon and going up to Marantz, you know, they're like Toyota and Lexus uh, partner companies there, is the calibration software and the processor is better. Um, so it's it's worth the money to, if you have it, to spend it on the Marantz. It's just made with better components inside. Another thing that I really like about uh, Denon and Marantz products is the fact that it comes with this nifty little wire labeler here. So as you're toning everything out, you can check and see, um, or you can label them once you check and see, uh, so that it lines right up with the back of the unit. You can even even label your like HDMI cables here. It's got AM and FM connections here, as well as Bluetooth. Bluetooth ears, you definitely want to go ahead and just put those on. AM, FM, I don't know. I hardly ever connect it because none of my customers use it anymore. Uh, this is pretty nifty. So when you're doing the calibration, this is a little stand that comes with all of the units to help get it at the correct location on your seat. So this is the front of the unit. You can see it's taped up right now, but Marantz doesn't have a huge display here on the front, but hidden behind here, you do have some more controls as well as HDMI. You have the setup uh, mic port, uh, phones port, you got the um, USB and then video, S video. Spin it around and look at the back. I'm gonna go ahead and put our ears on here. Our Bluetooth ears. Okay, so let's take a closer look here, guys. All right, let's talk through some of this and what it all does. So you got digital audio in, optical, um, one and two, you can see they have it labeled TV audio or media player. So you can either use coaxial for digital audio or you can use uh, optical. So what type of situation would you need that for? One of the biggest reasons that I use those ports is for audio return channel out of a television, like a smart TV, so that you can get Netflix and everything to play. Uh, through it or if you have like an old device that maybe doesn't have HDMI you could hook up right here and then take digital audio in You got a network jack. This is the hardwired into the system. So everything works really well and quickly 
Um, it also has all of these HDMI ports, seven here on the front and then on the, or sorry, seven here on the back and then there's one on the front. These are all 4K and the new DHCP 2.3 and these are assignable ports as well, so you can go into the programming and decide what you want to do. Uh, you have zone two here, monitor one and monitor two. So let's talk about different ways that you can use this. Um, monitor one in a theater situation is gonna be your main port, or if you just have a one room situation that you're using this receiver for, you would just take that out right to your television or your projector or whatever. Now, ARC is audio return channel. It doesn't always work, which is why I was talking about optical audio return. So um, what this is supposed to do on short runs, it works great, like six feet, 10 feet, it'll return the audio from Netflix or Hulu or whatever on the television right back to the receiver and do that automatically using CEC so that you don't have to, you can like control the receiver and stuff like that. A bunch of cool little features. Um, so that, that's what that stands for. And then you got monitor two, that's just if you wanted to display to another source and then zone two, that's if you wanted to say hook up, like I was explaining earlier, a 5.1 in the living room and then maybe on your patio, you wanted to power up another TV and stereo speakers. You could do that all off of this one receiver. Pretty cool, independent audio video as well. So you have really good flexibility. AM FM over here, which I was talking about earlier, almost never use it anymore. You got DC out, RS-232, flashers in, uh, you got a ground signal, uh, and then you got all of your, you know, old school component composite connections here. And then all of these guys down here are your audio ins that are assignable. And then you have 7.1 channel in, and then these are all your pre outs. So Pre-outs are great because you can send the signal out to like a, another two channel amp or four channel amp, five channel amp, seven channel amp, whatever, um, for additional juice. So in a lot of situations, you'll see us powering up the left and right and center separate from these guys here just because those require a lot more juice. Um, but you could do pre-outs on all your channels if you wanted. Now down here, these are where you physically connect your speakers if you're not using the pre-out. So in this situation, this 722, we're just connecting all of these direct right here. So you get your front left and right and center, surround left and right, surround back left and right, and then the height one and height two, these are assignable as well. So you can actually only use one of these at a time, uh, or you could use both of these and not use the surround back. That's a really confusing uh, specification that a lot of customers don't get whenever they're looking at this unit is how this physically works. Cause they're like, well, why can't I do 11 channels? Uh, there's 11 terminals, that, but that's just not how it works. They basically cross over inside of here so that you can use like four height speakers and just one surround, or you can use the surround and surround back and only one height. I hope that helps you guys out. Only other thing left back here is just the power. So here's what I was showing you earlier. One other feature that I didn't mention uh, earlier is the AirPlay 2. That's huge. Uh, I don't think they had that on last year's model. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty confident AirPlay 2 was not on last year's models. This does support HDR10 and HDL as well. And you can see they're really advertising Atmos here because Atmos has become so popular because it sounds amazing. Okay, guys. Well, that concludes my overview of the Marantz 6014. This is a great unit at a great price. We do have nationwide free shipping and a low price guarantee. You'd like to buy this product, make sure to reach out and show your support. We really appreciate it. Till next time, this is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. Thank you for watching.